Hey guys, what's good? It's your girl Amelia from The Beat of Adventure back with a brand new video and today I'm going to show you how to do epic product photography with one simple hack. So I was having a go at this the other day and just playing around with kind of fake product photography. Okay guys, so these are the quotable corks um, from Gary B's uh, Empathy Rosé that I want to take this photo with. Long finished the wine. I drank that well before quarantine even hit. They've got really cool quotes on them so I thought why don't I take some kind of image uh, with these as if I was like selling wine or something. I've got like four different quotes here. What we're going to do is we're going to get a shot and I'm going to show you how to take multiple photos and then blend them together. My idea was to have my hand like throwing the corks or having them like bouncing um, off the ground. Uh, but the thing is, it's much harder to capture that in one go. The objects aren't going to land exactly where you want them in the frame for them to look nice. Uh, you're gonna struggle with uh, focus and you know, getting the correct depth of field and all of these things. So you shoot a clean plate and then each of your other objects separately mask them out and do all of that in Photoshop. So this is a Photoshop tutorial and yeah, I think it's gonna be a great thing to try. This can be used in so many situations, so it's really useful and just like a great little skill to have in your back pocket. So let's jump in. So this is our setup. Think of textures and other items for interest. You want foreground and background elements. Basically, you approach creating your set the same way that you might if you were doing a flat lay. So objects that seem to interact with the subject. So I've just got some elements here. Um, that'll be really close to the lens, so it'll be out of focus, you won't really see it. And then we've got this coffee aviator mug with this like leather imprint, which looks quite cool. There's a basket in the background and I'm filming it on the floor because I've got this beautiful Persian rug uh, for these corks to bounce off. And then I'll have my hand throwing the corks and they'll be bouncing towards the camera. Now, the thing is, if you tried to actually capture it in motion, you could probably do it, but they're not gonna be perfect. So that is why we're going to take separate images and we're gonna piece them together in Photoshop afterwards. The next thing we're going to do is lock the lighting, camera settings and the camera itself. You don't want the lighting to change while you're shooting. So either close the curtains and use artificial lighting source or if you're using natural light from a window, you need to work really quickly because you don't want the lighting changing from your first shot to your last shot because that's gonna make it much harder to blend the images together afterwards. Okay, now to light this, I have this little ring light. Camera exposure settings and focus should be locked and manual so that it can't change. Manual focus is probably the most important because this really helps sell the shot that it's one photo rather than multiple shots taken and put together. I'm shooting this on my X-T20 uh, with the Samyang 12mm manual lens. It's a wide angle lens which will allow me to fit kind of these elements in and get it really a nice low aperture. So we get that nice bokeh and that we can fit everything in because that's all kind of quite close together. Your camera should be on a tripod or in my case sitting on the floor. <laughs> the idea is you don't want it to move so do whatever you can to keep it in one position and make sure it doesn't move between shots. Okay, so you want to be really careful not to knock your camera when you're doing this because we're going to Photoshop these. So your camera should ideally be on a tripod, but because I wanted this low angle, I've just got it on the ground. The next step is to shoot our clean plate. In my case, this was our scene or set with my hand doing a throwing action in the background. And this is our base. Okay, so I've got a couple of shots of my hand throwing without actually having anything in my hand. So I was just making the action. Now we take our composite images. These are the ones that we're going to blend with our clean plate. This is usually the part of your image that's in motion or levitating or whatever. In my case, it's the wine corks. So for this part, it's really important to use something that's easy to mask out later to hold the object in the frame. So pliers, tweezers, fishing wire. In my case, I used a Stanley knife because I'm shooting with corks and the corks are soft. So I was able to just stick the blade into the side of the cork and hold it wherever I needed to in the frame. 
So we're going to hold these in place and then we'll mask them out later. Repeat the process for each item taking at least two shots per position so that you have some options. Uh, and then I placed each of the corks about where I wanted them. The best part is your focus is locked, so everything will be at the correct focusing distance in the frame. I put my camera on a three second timer so that when I press the shutter button, the movement of my hand hitting the shutter didn't move the lens or move the camera. All right, so let's see how it went. Now we take it into the computer. They're in the computer? So bring your photos into Adobe Lightroom or your editor of choice. Make your basic and colour adjustments or just throw a filter on. Copy and paste these settings onto all the images in your set so that they're exactly identical. Then we're going to select them all, right click, go edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. This will open all of those layers as one Photoshop document. The next step is to mask our images in Photoshop. Once it's loaded, find your base layer, drag it to the bottom and rename it. Now disable all of the other layers and one by one find the first image you want to mask. I like to start from the back. Once you've got it, drag it down to sit on top of your base layer and rename it to something that's relevant to you. Now it's super easy to blend layers in Photoshop with layer mask. Once you get the hang of it, it's a really handy thing to know. We're going to start by selecting the layer we want to mask. Then hit Q or edit in quick mask mode. This is the rectangle with the circle in the middle. It's on the left hand side, second from the bottom of your tools. Hit B or you can select the brush tool, choosing a size and feather that suits, but making sure that the opacity and flow are set to 100%. Your foreground colour should be black and your background colour should be white. If it's opposite, you can just hit X on the keyboard to swap them quickly. Now, paint over your object and its shadow or any other bits that show it interacting with the set. So, for example, if your object was causing like splashes of water or if it was kicking up dust or sand or anything, you're going to want to also mask these for each layer because that's going to show it interacting with the background and that's going to sell the effect more. In my case, when I mask, I want to make sure I'm including the shadow too. Once you've painted over the object, it doesn't have to be perfect, we're going to fix it later. Hit Q again, and then Command Shift I to invert your selection. Then you're going to go to your Layers panel and hit the Add Layer Mask button. That's another little rectangle with a circle through it. As you can see, our mask isn't perfect because we did it rough. Now we're going to fine tune it and clean it up. To do that, select the layer, and then select the layer mask thumbnail. Then hit B. Now we can brush away or re-add any bits of that layer that we want. A black foreground color is going to erase stuff from the layer mask and white is going to add it back. If you want to change between the two quickly, just hit X on your keyboard and that will swap the two colors around. Repeat this process for every layer. I know it sounds tedious, but honestly, once you get the hang of it and you use the keyboard shortcuts, it becomes pretty quick. Choose the right feather, that's really important because that will help blend it together. If you've got a super, super sharp brush when you're erasing and bringing back that layer, it will start to look a little bit digital and a little bit fake. So play with your feather to get it just perfect. And we're done. Hit Command S to save. This will make a TIFF file and open that TIFF back up in Lightroom so you can make any final adjustments, crop it and export it. This method came in super handy for me when I released my ebook. I used the same concept but this time I made an iPad levitate. Then I turned the image into a mock-up which means that I can change whatever it is that I want to be on the screen of the iPad. Actually let me know in the comments below if you'd like to learn how to turn your photos into mock-ups. But that's it for today. I hope you take this concept and run with it. It's such a fun way to add motion to shots of otherwise inanimate objects. See you in the next one, guys. Peace out. Bye.